So, uh, for those who, of you who I uh, have not met, my name is Tyler Lewis. I'm serving as Vice President of uh, the Scribe for uh, Neurology Club. And today I kind of want to cover a couple quick things uh, that we are um, basically giving out as a resource to you guys. Uh, through one of the brilliant minds of our generation of chiropractors, uh, Jerome Lovey from Atlanta, and uh, Jason's hard work, we have put together a manual uh, for functional neurology. This is incredibly awesome. Basically what it does is it has the seven-week seven curriculum, which we're going to be covering here in club, uh, of all of the different aspects of functional neurology in the basic sense. So, uh, you know, we're going through our education here at Parker, we're getting all of this information given to us, but this does a fantastic job of actually putting this together in a functional sense in ways that are easy to understand. Looking through this thing, this thing is sexy. It really is. It's, it is. I'm there. Um, that's all you need. That's all you need. Um, anyway, like I was saying, it, it breaks everything down to some holistic terms and ways that we can use them. And so what we're doing, uh, we're selling these guys for uh, 30 bucks a piece. Um, so we're going to be passing around a roll sheet. So those of you who want to buy one today, uh, put a check mark by your name. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and get that order in as we print those and we'll get those back to you. And for those who may be interested in, in the future, come and talk to us afterwards. Um, we should have these out by next, next week. week. Yeah. So um, what we're going to be talking about in the class basically follows along with what we're doing here. Um, at the end of this, it has a test that you can take at the end of the try to kind of see where you stand as far as understanding and utilizing the material. Uh, so that's incredibly helpful. Um, so again, those of you who would be interested in this, come talk to me, come talk to Jason after club, and we'll get you set up. Cool. We're super anti-classroom. We've been sitting in class since 7 o'clock this morning, right? So this helps us give you, instead of, you know, taking up an hour and 15 minutes of notes, we want to get through what we want to get through in 15, 20 minutes, so then we can go and do some more treatment, more adjusting, more diagnostic stuff, more chiropractic stuff. We want hands-on. We're tired of sitting in class. We want to actually actively learn something. So if you guys get that, a lot of money is going to help go to the kids that we're trying to help out too. Some of that money goes towards the club so we can function and do cool stuff to get more people involved in club. Um, so that's why it's 30 bucks. Um, we're going to spiral it for you. It's going to look way sexier than that. Um, that's my bad because that's my copy. I like to add stuff and you know do kind of lesson plan stuff. But Yeah, and I think you discussed last week what we're actually doing with that. We, uh, we plan on sponsoring a child to get treated at Care Brain Center. It's, uh, it's a very expensive process. Um, we have you know a lot of funding to serve vets, but less so to actually serve children. So this is kind of one project that we want to take on our own, our own so we can help out some of these children. Really cool, really great cause. And it helps you guys out a lot. Okay. So you guys can either pay 30 bucks a day, we'll have a folder for you, or a binder, a manual, whatever, for you guys next week, or you guys can just bring the money next week and we'll have enough, hopefully, um, I think Annette's got the, the things to pass around right now. So Annette, go ahead and pass those around. If you guys want a manual by next week, go ahead and let us know, we'll, and then just check. If you guys pay today, we'll check you off as paid, we'll hand you one, and then you'll have it next week. Alright, let's roll. I'm going to get through this like in 15, 20 minutes, because I want you guys to have a lot of hands-on time today. I think that's really important. So we already did that. Do what? <laughs> What's up? <coughs> I wanted to ask if you missed the week, is there, uh, I rumored that there was fill in the blanks in there, so. so. We do have fill in the blanks. So we have a lot of pictures and diagrams that aren't in the PowerPoints. So that's, that's kind of the incentive to get it, is if you guys, you know, for example, I was like, what did we do last week? And everybody was like, yeah, we're here. And it's like, oh, but I can't remember. That's like, you make notes, you go in, you fill in stuff. So you have it, and you're like, okay, because that was really cool, but, it, you know, and then you go to tell one of your friends, and you're like, ooh, like, it sounded good, but then when I go to explain it, it wasn't all there. You know what I mean? So it'll be, a lot of that stuff will be in there. You can go as you go. It'll be easier to take notes instead of writing out an entire paragraph that whoever's speaking that day says. You can just, like, follow along and get the main points of, like, you know, that kind of thing. But if there's still the blanks if you miss a week, then is there any way to yeah, we'll have, we post the videos every week too on the website. So you got go back through the, the all the videos. We'll post them weekly, so you'll be good to go. Anybody else have any questions? Good to go. All right, let's roll. So I thought this this kind of because the iPhone six just came out. It kind of made me think about chiropractic. The question was, if someone from the 1950s suddenly appeared today, what would be the most difficult thing to explain to them about life today? And this guy said, I possess a device in my pocket 
that is capable of accessing the entirety of information known to man. I use it to look at pictures of cats and get in arguments with strangers. So to me, that's like, I hope we would all agree that, like, take away surgery, take away hardcore drugs, when you look at tools to treat neurological symptoms, tools to treat orthopedic symptoms, neurological movement, whatever, the chiropractic adjustment is like the Rolls Royce of all of that. I hope that's why you guys are spending 200 grand in student loans to kind of, you guys buy into that idea, right? Like the, the chiropractic adjustment is super powerful. We've all seen it do. Raise your hand if you've seen a chiropractic adjustment change somebody's life. Okay, so we get that. So part of this club is to say, hey, we recognize the value in what we do, and we're going to learn all about what it can do to better help the patient out. I don't know if that like clicked with anybody else, but I saw that. I'm like, man, we got a really valuable thing. Let's dive all in. Let's get better at it. Let's help a bunch of patients, okay? So they are going to be talking about the left brain versus the right brain. Um, they do a little bit different thing. The right brain says, I am the right brain. I am creativity, a free spirit. I am passion, yearning, sensuality. I am the sound of roaring laughter. I am taste, the feeling of sand beneath bare feet. I am movement, vivid colors. I am the urge to paint on an empty canvas. I am boundless imagination, art, poetry, I sense, I feel, I am everything I want it to be. The left brain, I am the left brain, I am a scientist, a mathematician, I love the familiar, I categorize, I am accurate, linear, analytical, strategic, I am practical, always in control, a master of words and language, Cre uh, realistic, I calculate equations and play with numbers, I am order, I am logic, I know exactly who I am. So, it came out with a lot of research from 1985 all the way to about right now. And they said, they, they're trying to figure out as much as they could about the brain. Part of that is they realize that the left and the right brain, they work together, but they do a little bit of different things. It's kind of like if you have too many cooks in the kitchen trying to do the same exact thing in this little bitty space, you end up slowing the process down because it's just too busy. So the left brain takes care of some stuff, the right brain specializes a little bit of different things, they work together and they speed up the process. You've got a really good, healthy brain. The problem with this is when the left brain is working and going really, the frequency of firing the left brain is really, really strong, it slows down the right brain and inhibits the right brain. When the right brain goes really, really fast and does its thing, it inhibits the left brain. So it should be kind of like a seesaw. You should have this balance and you should have a room for reserve to where the left brain's working. It doesn't dampen the right brain enough to where it's like pathologic or something. Um, so we're going to go, the whole time we're going to be talking about this is we're going to be explaining kind of left brain, right brain stuff and how a chiropractic adjustment helps to even that stuff out because when these aren't even and these aren't functional, we start to see changes in health. So we want an even, very well connected nervous system. That's the goal. So this is kind of a little bit more of a breakdown. The right brain focuses on the big picture, um, more large muscle control. The left brain focuses on details. I'll give you guys this uh, PowerPoint so you can look at it. I'm just going to kind of roll so we can do different stuff. Um, I have these two books somewhere. If you guys are interested in looking at them after club or whatever, you guys can come look at them. I kind of took the cover off that one because I spilled stuff all over it at the airport. But if you guys are interested in neurology and you guys are really interested in wanting to learn more about chiropractic, I highly recommend, especially if you're in the first year of chiropractic school, getting both of these books. This one talks about autism, but it actually talks more about developmental um, neurological processes. How, you know, as we grow from in the womb until now, how the nervous system kind of develops, the asymmetries that develop if you don't do it right, and how to how to treat a lot of different neurological conditions. But it's really, really good. Who's read this? Is Matt in here? Bryce has read it. Matt, what do you think? Oh, it's a fantastic book. Um, really kind of breaks it down for, for kind of layman's term for that any, any everyday person to understand. Cool. So it's worth it? Absolutely. Bryce, what do you think? Uh, well, a lot of people talk about autism and they know that there's a genetic link with autism, but what Melillo looks at is he understands that your genes don't give you a set of how your life is going to be. Your genes determine how you respond to your environment. So what Melillo is looking at is what are all of the environmental and developmental factors that go into developing these types of disorders. It's a really good book. Um, this, and this kind of goes into Bryce's realm too. And Bryce is our research coordinator for CLUB. And when we went into all this research for today, we, we talked about the different things, what, what this is called, why 
you know, and, and what's the name of that? Um, when you get in third try, what's the chiropractic textbook? That yellow cover. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Chiropractic technique. In that, I should find it. I'll, I'll pull it up or I'll put it on Facebook. There's a really cool article in there, and it kind of says, it basically gives you, after all the research is done, it kind of breaks down the old model and the new model. The old model was we used to put pressure on a nerve. The new model, after 20 years of research, where everybody's like, there's no research to back up chiropractic. They said that between 1 and 3% of, there you go, yeah. One in three, and this is this is from chiropractic techniques. This is like, you know, this is the textbook for, you know, has all the different, um, it has videos for setups and stuff. I highly recommend this book. This book is awesome. Uh, but it says between one and three percent of the time, the nerve actually gets compressed by a bone or by a paraspinal muscle. And if you if that did happen in that one to three percent, you would get something called Valerian degeneration. So we know that doesn't happen a lot. And then so chiropractors were like, what the heck? You know, like that's what we thought we did. Well, it turns out that because of that fixation, what we talked about last week, that's altered afferent input to the brain. So when you have altered afferent input to the brain, you're gonna have decreased output from that brain. And that's what we know as that, that huge communication aspect to chiropractic. So I'm not gonna give you guys the full story, but Check out this book, it's really good. It's really modernized, um, both the philosophy and the science of, of what we do. And it actually, it takes the research that we thought we had, disproves it, and gives us 10 times more research to prove that what we do works, and it works way more than we thought it did. Cool? Um, but these are the different words. So hemisphericity, um, functional disconnection, it's also called developmental disconnection, desynchronization, and underconnectivity. Weak central um, coherence, temporal process, processing deficit. You guys look these up, and we'll give you the research on these because this is this is what proves what we do works. Cool. So if you guys like research, go check it out. Talk about different. Uh, does anybody watch the show? Yes. Cool. So talk about. There's two different kinds of geniuses. There's the balanced genius and the unbalanced genius. This is a left brain genius. He means he has a really bad right brain. Yep. Right? In the show, if like somebody's mom dies, he's like, whatever, I don't care. Like very, very non-apathetic, um, but very, very smart, very linear thinking, great scientist, so very socially inept, um, bad at romantic relationships. So that, that gives you an idea. If you think left brain, if somebody's really left brain, think Sheldon Cooper. Cool? If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch a season of Big Bang Theory and you'll figure it out. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. <laughs> Right brain genius. This is what we were talking about in class the other day. Einstein would take a, an idea. He was really bad at math, but he was really good at physics and the concepts of physics. He would take an idea and he would call it, he called it a thought experiment. So he would say, I think this is the way it is. This is what makes sense, the big picture, the universe. And then now I'm going to figure out the math to either prove or disprove what I'm thinking. So he was huge, big picture. Um, and then I like this quote, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Because a lot of times we think we know what we're talking about, and then somebody's like, well, explain it to me. And you're like, uh, and that's, you know, so so until you can explain it to somebody on like a fourth grade level, go back and learn it again. Uh, da Vinci, he was a balanced genius. He he taught himself. There's actually, if you guys haven't been to half-price books, it's really, really cool. If you get all these books for like 99 cents. There's a book on him, How to Learn or How to Think Like Da Vinci, and they were talking about how he taught himself as a kid to write right-handed, left-handed, he could paint right-handed, left-handed, he could write backwards, and he could write in a mirror image. So he could write, and he could do that on both hands. Um, and actually, Dr. Milo says, if you're ambidextrous, that's actually not a good thing. It actually slows the brain down. But he was very, very balanced. He was a very, very good scientist, and he was a very, very good artist. So if you guys want to, if you guys are interested in learning like about how people thought, and you know, he's, He's kind of big time in terms of people study him how to think, you know, how to just, he did a lot of different stuff. We don't have time for that. I'll skip that part. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I want to show you guys this video. So this video shows a patient with primitive reflexes. Dr. Melillo is a doctor and he's treating this patient. He's going to do some stuff on an iPhone. He's got, all he has to work with is light, sound, and vestibular. He's going to actually turn her head. So this is going to show the pathology, or pathology of a patient with, you'll see primitive reflexes. She's very um, sensitive to movement. And he's going to do some stuff. 
he's actually going to treat her. He's actually going to, let's say if she's got a left brain deficit, it's not firing as high as it should be. He's actually going to make that brain fire more and he's going to fix her. Then he's going to treat her on the opposite side and make her worse. And then he'll treat her on the right side again and make her better again to show you the difference of if you have too much input on one side versus the other side, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And what happens if you actually treat, so this works as a chiropractic adjustment too. If you adjust them on the wrong side, it could change brain function. If you adjust them on, you know, and it works both ways. You can either fix them or make them worse. And this is a pretty cool video to show that.
You guys know that. Remember, all I had to do was just gently touch your face before. And it happened. There's nothing. Um, maybe this, maybe a suggestive process that some people see in the video may say. So, what we're going to do with your permission is you are going to put it back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, just temporarily, I mean, we want to see is this something that would just, you know, again, is this more of a placebo effect? Or is this actually because we did a specific kind of spirit based stimulus, or could we have done anything to us to make this happen? So, what we're going to do is we're now going to use. Um, more high frequency light than we're going to do on this side. You're doing a tempo field? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going to work on the bridal field on the right as well. So I'm coming from a little lower. goes back in and fixes it. But the guy, he gives you the point, right? If you do some sort of stimulus on the right side, it'll bring up the left brain. When he did it right, it actually fixed it because both of those hemispheres were working together. They were at the same speed. If you had two computers, and let's say I had two of these computers hooked up side by side, two MacBook Pros, and one had a really, really old processing chip in it. I don't even know how computers work, but an old processor, there was a really slow computer and a really, really fast computer, and they were communicating. If they're working good, let's say they're both working the right way first. So if they're both fast, they can both talk to each other. If you're having a communication or if you're talking to somebody and they can keep up in a conversation, you can talk more. You can do your job better. As soon as one takes a dump and is working way down here, that part of the brain just to go back from computers to the brain, that part of the brain realizes that the other hemisphere is going so slow that it stops using it. It's like, if you're not gonna help me out and do what I need to do, I'm just gonna start doing it on my own. When the left hemisphere is so fast and the right hemisphere is so slow that the left hemisphere goes, I don't even need you, I'm just gonna do it myself, we call that autism. You see autistic kids and their ability to work with other people and that, that empathy and those right brain functions that are so decreased and that left brain is so on fire and go, 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 that's what that looks like. Sheldon Cooper is like almost autistic if you think about it. Um, what's up? There's a, there's a really good resource. It goes right along with that video. If you go to the research section on the website and go to the Hemisphericity page, there's like a, I think about an 11, 17 page uh, study by Melillo talking about how primitive reflexes are important because you see a lot of primitive reflexes in people with autism and how sh how developing those primitive reflexes and getting rid of them at, through your development um, can impact your risk of autism and other types of disconnect syndromes. It's really cool. So if you want some, if you don't have the books and want some more information, go check it out. Which reminds me too, who's, who's interested in either having kids personally, working with kids as a doctor? Let's start with those. Raise your hand. Cool. So there was a doctor in Atlanta, in the Atlanta club, who, you guys remember the spinal gallant, where he, he went up the side of her pair of spinals and she went like that? That's a primitive reflex. Babies have that. So if you go up to a baby and you see them, they'll do this. They do reflexogenic movements before they can volitionally move. That's how they learn to move. They do it as a reflex so many times until it becomes something that they go, I want to look left. Boom. Right? So this is a very premature neurological thing. So. One of his patients, um, 
she was trying to give birth. The doctors were like, there's no way you can have this baby naturally. And a lot of us don't do drugs, don't do medicine. She was like, I want, this means a lot to me. I want to do this the right way with no drugs and no surgery. But the baby wouldn't fall in. So it wouldn't fall in the birth canal. She couldn't have the baby. They were going to have to do a C-section. So the doc was thinking about it, and he had a patient that day where he had to do that gallant reflex. He goes, I, got, I have an idea. So he walks up to the mom, and she's got this big old belly, and he just rubs her belly. And he figures out where the baby was, and he like did whatever he did, I guess palpate, and he figured out, okay, I bet that baby's paraspinals are right there. And he went up and went, boom, and the baby did a gallant in the mom's belly, and the baby tucked and rolled in, like it's upside down, and the baby fell in. She had her baby naturally in like two minutes. Right? So what medical doctor is going to know that? Good luck. So if you guys have that, or a patient, because you guys have a lot of patients that will follow you all over the place. You know, their loyalty will be with you, and they want you to be there to adjust the baby. When the baby comes out, they want to be adjusted after that. So you might be there one day. And so if you're in that situation, try it. It'd be cool if it worked, right? Yeah. So just a thought. All right, so now we're going to teach you guys. Okay, so go on light, go on sound. It goes the same way with the chiropractic adjustment. If you have, let's say, six fixations six joints that are fixated on this side, and you've got everything freely moving and freely working on this side, it goes the same way. You're gonna have a hemisphericity in one half. So if I've got all my joint fixations on one side, what hemisphere is gonna be decreased? The other side. The opposite. So if I have a left fixation or a left subluxation, what brain is gonna be decreased? Right. We call that a right hemisphericity. So when we adjust them, then we're gonna bring that frequency frequency of firing back up to the right hemisphere, and now we should have even hemispheres, right? We've got a fully functional, hopefully, neurological patient. So that's what we want. So we're going to find a couple different things. Everybody find a buddy. Does everybody have, like, pair up real quick. We're going to 